What are partial classes in C-sharp? Stay tuned as we show you how to use them and why we use them. We're going to start off by creating a new class, which we're going to call my class. We're then going to create another class. This one we're going to call my class methods. Now both classes have been called my class, and because of that, we're getting this exception that says the namespace already contains a definition for my class. To fix that, we can add the partial keyword before the class. We can do that for both files, so we've done it in the my class file. We're going to do it in the my class methods, and the exception disappears. As a result of this, each of the files can see each other's members in that same class. In the my class file, we're going to add a new property, which we're going to call OK. And then if we go into the my class methods file, we're going to create a new method. We're going to call it is it OK? And it's going to return the property OK that we've got in the my class file. Now, partial classes also work in struts and interfaces. When there are partial classes of the same namespace and class name, the compiler will add all the members from each of the partial classes and merge it into one class. As a result of this, there are some rules that we need to follow. As we demonstrated earlier, all classes need to be marked as partial. If one of them doesn't get marked as partial, we get the exception that states the missing partial modifier and declaration of type and other partial declaration of this type exists. Partial must exist before the class, interface, or struct declaration. If we were to add something like abstract in front of it, we'd get the exception saying the partial modifier can only appear immediately before the class, the record, or the struct, interface, or a method return type. The namespace must match in each of the partial classes. If we were to change one of them, it'd be a totally different class, and as a result of this, if we're using any of the members, we're going to get this exception because it can't see the OK property because it's now in a different namespace. Access modifiers must be the same for each of the partial classes. In the my class file, we're going to change it from public to internal, and we're now getting this exception saying partial declarations have conflicting accessibility modifiers. In order to fix that, we'd also need to change the access modifier in the myclass.methods file to internal. And as a result of that, the exception disappears. If the abstract keyword is used in one of the partial classes, the class becomes an abstract class. It's the same case with sealed as well. We're going to demonstrate this by creating a new instance of the my class. Now notice it compiles fine. If we go into the my class file, we're going to mark this partial class as abstract. Now the declaration throws an exception saying cannot create an instance of the abstract type or interface my class. And that's despite the fact that only one of the partial classes is marked as abstract. The same rules apply to attributes. If we were to mark an attribute on one of the partial classes, it would apply to the whole class. Now in one of the partial classes, we're going to mark it as obsolete. Notice when we mark it as obsolete, we're coming up with this warning that says the my class is obsolete. And that's despite the fact that in the other partial class, we haven't marked it as obsolete. As per the usual rules, you can only inherit one class. We're going to demonstrate this by creating a new class, which we're going to call my base class. Now, it doesn't matter which partial class we actually do the inheritance, it's going to be the same. We can do it on one, we can do it on this one, or we can even do it on both of them, and it will still compile fine. The problem comes when we try to inherit another class. We're going to create a new base class, which we're going to call my base class 2. Now, if we attempt to inherit this class in one of the partial methods, we're now going to get an exception that states partial declarations must not specify different base classes. Because now in the my class file, we've got the my base class 2 inheriting it. But in my class, we've now got the my base class. So we've got two inheriting classes, which is not allowed. We can implement more than one interface into a partial class. I'm going to add a new interface, which we're going to call iBase. And we're going to implement that into the my class partial file in the my class file. And then we're going to create another new interface, which we're going to call iBase2. And we're going to add that to the partial class that is in the my class.methods file. Now it needs to follow the rules of an interface where anything that's marked as a method needs to be declared in the class. 
We're going to create a method in the iBase interface. We're just going to call it my method. Now we'll get an exception here because neither the my class file or the my class.methods file implements that. Now we can do it in either of the files. It doesn't really matter too much. Although this is implementing the iBase too, we can add the method that is in the iBase into it. And as a result of that, that will now compile fine. The same rules apply around constructors. So if we go into the my class file, we could set other parameters constructor in there. But if we were to do it in the other partial class in the my class dot methods, we then get this exception that says type my class already defines a member called my class with the same parameter types. And we do that with parameters as well. They can be declared in either the partial classes, but the signature must be unique in each of them. Each of the members must be unique in each of the partial classes. So in this my class file, we've got this property called OK. However, if we were to add it into the my class dot methods file, we now get an exception that states the type my class already contains the definition for OK because it's already contained within this partial class. It's also possible to add partial members into a partial class. This is handy if a source generator was to generate a partial class with a partial member and you can add the implementation for that partial member into another partial class of the same namespace and class name. So in this one, we're going to add a new partial method. I'm just going to call it my method. Now this would typically happen in a source generated file. We can then implement it into one of the other partial classes. So we need to mark it as partial. We get the implementation, then we can add the implementation within that method. So why use partial classes in the first place? Well, if you've got multiple developers working in the same class, you could have one developer working on one of the partial classes and the other developer working on the other. It's also used in source generated files to add additional functionality. This is an example of a source generated file that has been used in the popular CMS Umbrakai. So it's generated this partial class called order confirmation page in this namespace. What we've done is we've created our own separate partial class. We've made sure it's got the same namespace and the same partial class, and then we can add some additional functionality. So we've created a new property of order with the order model, and we've created this public method that will go through, it will pass in the order model type as a parameter, and it will set it to the order property. Let us know in the YouTube comments what you use partial classes for. And if you want to learn more about some of the new recent features that have been added to C Sharp, Watch this video next. The video features new C Sharp 12 editions such as collection expressions and primary constructors. It's important to learn the newer features of C Sharp to help you write cleaner code.